<clears throat> so I've had the pleasure of talking to you virtually, but it's so much nicer to actually talk to you in person. <laughs> so, um, so, so why don't we, um, thank you. Why don't we start off with uh, you, Daniel, and, and uh, tell us a little bit about you and Wireless Car and, um, and your development, where you're going. Yeah, so my name is uh, Daniel Ferguson. I'm from uh, Wireless Car, working as the head of business development. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yes, and my name is uh, Thomas Tafanelli, and I'm responsible for in car apps and mobile apps at uh, Polestar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, as your two companies are partnering, so can you sort of give us some uh, insight into, you know, what you're partnering on and, and the experiences and learnings you've had to date? Yes, um, as you probably know, Polestar World was the first uh, OEM to launch with uh, Google Automotive Services. Uh, we launched that two and a half years ago, I think. Um, so uh, they came with, you know, uh, hygiene services that you see in every car today uh, with uh, Google Assistant, Google Maps integrated with a bunch of apps that are hygiene, such as music and so on. And what we decided when we partnered with wireless cars is that we could also add other layers to differentiate ourselves from people that we also launched with Google Automotive Services. And through that partnership, we managed to launch services super, super quickly. I think it's kind of unseen in this, uh, in this era to go with from an idea to releasing a car in a matter of month. Yeah, and, and from our perspective, then, uh, it's a traditional TSP coming into this uh, and have this opportunity working with a, a progressive uh, OEM like Polestar first on the market with uh, Android Automotive OS. And by that leverage of our products, backend products uh, existing in the cloud already there, and uh, can pipe the data up to them and by that uh, provide uh, services uh, really quick. I think uh, the one, uh, the, the, the product or the uh, feature that we delivered that we did together during the summer last, uh, last year, it took us uh, only, uh, I think it was two months, from uh, starting up and uh, being production ready, uh, so to say. Then it took uh, uh, quite yeah. a while with the terms and conditions and so on, but that's... Yeah. Yeah. that's the technical <laughs> part was the easy part. Uh, <laughs> and that was super, super quick. Uh, like, I, like he said, two months, I think, from the, the first meeting to be able to, to try it and test it in a car and working in a car. Yeah. Uh, the legal part took a little bit more time, uh, but uh, that's kind of really good example on how fast uh, now we can sort of release those services through those APIs that are made available uh, via Google and so on. So yeah, that was a great experience. And now we have more things cooking. We cannot maybe talk about it on stage, but great example. Yeah, but so, it's, yeah, sorry to so interrupt. The, I was going to just let me pick up. You were talking about the legal versus the technical. Having solved it this, that first time, does that then go away for other ones, or have you? Will you each time? Will you have to go through a? Um, will legal be a, an issue that you'll have to build into your okay. development cycle? No, I would say that we learn from our uh, mistakes, right? So uh, no, I, I think it's also something that will become uh, easier along the way. Those uh, legal because we we kind of. Uh, exploring right so it's uh, you know sometimes the legal department is like can we actually do this can we not so it takes a bit of time but the technical part was actually uh, so fast yeah. so you sorry Danny. yeah it, uh, i just wanted to add that uh, it took two months from that but the, the backend product has been developed since uh, almost uh, 2000 because it has evolved over the time so it it requires to be fast, yeah, to develop an app, but you need a solid backend in order to, to be fast. So we were talking on the, the previous panel about the, the sort of the cloud and the vehicle. I mean, this is really one of those examples where you can have an idea for a service mm -hmm. and, and you have to you have to develop the app in for the vehicle, but at the same time you've got to think of the the cloud solution and the connectivity aspect in order to be able to introduce it and support it. Is that right? Yes, I mean, it's, uh, and th this is why, because we, 
we are uh, still, I think, considered as a startup. And we're a fairly uh, small team, uh, even though we're backed by uh, giants like uh, uh, Gillian and, and, uh, and Volvo. But you know, for us, this is where those partnerships really make sense because we know that wireless car has the backbone to help us achieve our goals. And sometimes I think in, in this industry, OEM tends to think of, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do this myself. Uh, and we actually believe that through partnerships, uh, it's faster and you rely on people that has the experience of, of launching those services. So, yeah. So, I mean, one of the questions, I, 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 the opportunities and advantages, as a startup, you, you or not a startup, but a, but a, um, yeah, a, small, a smaller uh, player, you've gone for Android Auto. Now, there's a lot of people that have anxiety about that. So, so what's the, what was the men, what was the, the game changer for you that that made it made sense to to go that route? Uh, I mean, at first, I would say that everybody that has anxiety about Google and car, I would advise them to test drive our cars, and I think uh, they will see the game changer for for themselves. But uh, Again, I think sometimes you have to uh, rely on those partnerships. You have to realize that, uh, yeah, Google Maps is probably the best maps that exist on the market if you want to have precise information about traffic, about charging, and so on. So uh, I think this is where we, we, we wanted to take a stand. We, we want to use those companies, such as Wireless Car or, or Google, to actually realize those goals because we want the environment in the car to be seamless and to be part of your digital ecosystem. And if you're not partnering with those guys that are already there, then you're not. And I think this is where I understand the, that some people might feel you know, the, 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 the heat or the fear of, 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 of Google in, in, in that case. But uh, I mean, everybody uses their Google Maps on their phone as well, right? What is the difference? But a follow-on from that is, is, you know, there's a fear of not being able to differentiate yourself. You know, everybody has a square phone these days um, and it's got a blank screen and it's this big, that. But, you know, the differentiation. So is there, it, do, how do you address that anxiety? I mean, this partnership is, is for example, a really good, uh, really good case because... So through these, uh, those APIs that are provided by Google, we managed to launch our own app through the Play Store. And via this Play Store, we're able to launch it. Uh, you know, uh, you, you publish it and the next day it's in the car. You don't have to rely on uh, OTA or anything like this. So you can still different yourself and launch your own services, your own sort of layers on top of what Google is providing. So it's actually, I would say, limitless in a sense. It doesn't put you in a box, not at all. You can actually uh, differentiate yourself. Some OEMs might rely fully on Google and will only rely on Google Apps, but you have the ability and the, the journey log that we launched together uh, is, is a perfect example of that. So Daniel, would, you know, having that back end in place, does, does that give you an opportunity to offer services with other manufacturers that are contemplating uh, Android Auto OS or? Yeah, I, I would say time to market is the, the real benefit here. Uh, using Play Store in this case as a distribution channel for software distribution, instead of waiting for a car program to finalize three, three four years after the idea was born and so on. So that is a great opportunity for us to to, to utilize and leverage on that. So you used Google Play Store, but um, was there over-the-air updating involved as well? I mean, how how did that how did that work? Yeah, but uh, in 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 this case, uh, so far, uh, Polestar, I answer for Polestar, yeah, but uh, are not using the OTA through that channel. It goes traditionally to the TCU, that is the OTA master in the vehicle and provide the necessary software to the different TCUs in the car. Uh, but uh, in the future, why not using, uh, in this case, Play Store as the, uh, as the software distribution channel for, for OTAs? So 
so where do, how if if Google if you use Google Play Store as the distribution how where does what how does wireless car play in that in you yeah so we 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 do the in vehicle app right and then it can be I think it's uh, four or three different levels in uh, in the setup that Post have done. So you have the lowest level where it's called system level or, or something. Uh, for example, the user manual and so on, always that. And then you have the Polestar distribution channel, the OEM channel. And uh, if we are able to work together with Polestar, we can distribute our white label services through that channel. Okay. Branded as Polestar. Okay. So, so talk me through the, from idea to, to delivery of the service. What was, what, what was the initial idea uh, that you had, uh, Thomas? Um, yeah, so basically this, uh, this was, the, the idea of this journal log uh, was in our backlog for quite some time and we wanted to release it via mobile app. Uh, but then we met with with wireless car, and it it came quite quick in our mind that we could do something uh, through the in car environment. Uh, and as I mentioned, it become you know quite quite clear quite quickly that it was a perfect sort of spot for this app to be. And uh, yeah, I mean, and then I've actually we had a bunch of meetings, uh, and, and from ideas on the PowerPoint to having the sort of demo in the car, it just took. Uh, yeah, two months, yeah. even less than that, I would say. Yeah, but also to, to that kind of data that the journal log that is collecting and sent to the back, it is that kind of data that is interesting to, to dig in, to, do, to apply data management on. So you can see how, uh, or you, you can find out how, to, how the customers to Polestar actually are using their products. And that is uh, something that is included in the in the service. That uh, every 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 month we meet and we present insights of the month, and uh, based on that, new services can be born, or it can be uh, uh, the base for future decision of uh, different kinds. So a lot of the OEMs, you know, are talking about service revenue going forward. I mean, so if I if I pick up on what you just said, is is the role of wireless car in that going to be helping them identify what those service plays could be? Yeah, but uh, just uh, I would change the word from uh, service revenue to service value, because one important thing is to create that it create value. It can be. Uh, a supporter to the OEM's digital transformation or digital journey uh, by uh, using leverage on the dynamic data that uh, that the services are providing to the backend, uh, and uh, by providing those kind of services, Journalog is one example. We have uh, another one also in production in the background, sending for fleet or for B two B purposes. And uh, so that kind of uh, services we see in front of us. So the dynamic data, though, that's collected, it, is, that's, is that stored with you or is that stored with Polestar? Uh, currently it's stored with us, but we provide it with open APIs. So it's open to Polestar at any time, any state, get the data into their data lake or to their... Uh, their. And then, like uh, we were touching upon the, 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 the Google... Uh, thing here before we have uh, agreements stipulated what we are allowed to do or what we shall do uh, with the data that is uh, stipulated by uh, by Polestar in this case, like you have with uh, Google also, I guess. Yeah, and with that sort of data, it really allows us to kind of tailor the services based on 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 real customer needs. So we're able to be super, super agile and, and pivot if, if needed and really tailor the services based on what we see coming out of those data. So we're not shooting in the dark, so to say. We, are, we kind of know where we're going whenever we launch a service because we can base it on actual data that uh, this partnership allowed us. So if we talk about connected car for a second, where, where do you see the connected car going? In, in, in the future? I mean, it's sort of, 
everybody sort of says connected car, but I mean, from, from your perspective, you're, you're thinking about it. How, how, do, you, how yeah. do you think about it? It's a really broad uh, topic, but I, I think, and I've heard that in the last uh, panel, I think it's going to be more and more uh, software driven and a bit less uh, um, tied to, to hardware. I think the really the, the, the value here with connected car is that you will be able to, uh, through software, kind of make this app leave, uh, make this car leave, uh, you know, un until the end, until it kind of dies. It will stay fresh uh, uh, with a bunch of services coming up. Uh, I think at Polestar, we, we really want to have this cadence of every three months uh, updating the car with new services into the car. And I think this is where it's going to go. I, I'm also a big sort of uh, fan, fan into cloud computing. I think it's also that could be also something interesting for, for the automotive uh, industry, where maybe at some point you would just need a screen that uh, allow streaming and your operating system will be somewhere in the data center and you will never need to sort of change your hardware because it will be updated in those data centers. So I think uh, that would be my, my answer, but it's quite a broad question. So Yeah, no, that, that, but I mean, Daniel, you've, you guys have been in connected vehicles since the very early days. Yes. So, so where do you see it going? Yeah, but uh, if we go back to the early days where our first service is uh, around call center, call center service like e-call, b-call, uh, i-call, oh, you name it, stolen vehicle tracking, those kind of things to, to leverage on the, to, to evolve those services by leverage on the already existing in vehicle equipment like cameras for bi-directional video call for a breakdown or or stolen vehicle tracking those kind of things that is the direction when it comes to those traditional uh, services you know? so so thomas you mentioned cloud computing but one of the subjects that that's emerging an awful lot is edge and mobile edge computing mm -hmm. and how will that impact the uh, connected vehicle? Uh, I see what we have done now together with Polestar, that is uh, edge computing for, for us, but it's uh, Google, it's not Microsoft Edge, or it's not AWS Greengrass, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, Google's uh, way of uh, providing edge. And uh, yeah, so that is basically how I see it. I'm not so technical uh, there, so I can uh, go deeper into that. Maybe, maybe you are. <laughs> yes, business owner, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so you talked about Google Play Store. I mean, is that going to be the, the, the best distribution mechanism for you or will you have your own uh, type Play Store? How do you see that evolving? I think you have to see it in a, in a customer sort of perspective. Uh, and, and I think that right now the idea of, is that we'll use this, this Play Store because why, I mean, in the eyes of a customer, you only need one sort of app store. Why would you need two? And especially if it's us as, as an OEM, we can use that as our own distribution channel. So um, I would say right now, I don't see a need of having, you know, our own sort of app store in a car. We, we can. We can have we can use the, the the play store and tailor it as as much as we want and still getting those i would say hygiene kind of apps that you would get through the play store but in the eyes of a customer it might be confusing to have different source of services so we would need a pretty big reason to add another sort of store in in, in our cars right now i think the, the idea is to go through that play store using all those capabilities that Google is offering us and, and really going for it. So in the, the, the Stellantis presentation this morning, they were talking about lifetime revenue, um, which, is, which is requiring really a, a whole new mindset uh, from, from the OEMs. As, as you approach this and, and start to think about the fact that you know, vehicles, in the case of Polestar with the electric vehicle, the life is probably going to be longer than the average life of an ICE. Um, how, do you, how do you think about that lifetime revenue? Is that, and, and then also, is it, what do you do in terms of connecting with different customers over that life, lifetime of the, 
as a vehicle? Yes, I think it's it's a really really good question. I think that um, in the past OEMs were uh, making money on yeah for, for sure s selling the cars, but also servicing the cars, right? And I think the aim of our cars is that it, we don't require much services because it's damn good car. And uh, yes, the, the idea is that we're preparing now as well to, to uh, probably sell uh, digital services through this car. So now we have these, all those capabilities, everything is sort of in place. Uh, we actually released uh, uh, recently what we call the performance uh, software upgrade, which is basically you, you buy this package for like, I think it's in dollars, so we probably something around $1,000. And from uh, 410 horsepower, you get around 500 horsepower just through software. And so, yes, we're preparing for those. Uh, and I think this is definitely uh, the, the future in that keeping that revenue and keeping that revenue for the whole lifetime of, 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 of the cars, uh, instead of servicing it uh, in, that, in that sense, like it was done before, I would say. And that, Daniel, I mean, as you think about that, how does that shape your business going forward in terms of you know, having to have that connectivity with a vehicle and services for those vehicles? Is, is it changing the way that you're approaching your customers? No, not much. We, we see it as a lifetime each time we, uh, you know, call center service or come back to that. It's a lifetime often sold by the OEM as a life and so on. So, so we, are, we are supporting that, but also, we are more looking into the aftermarket uh, or after sales uh, services to support players like Polestar in their um, aftermarket business or after sales business. So, the, um, when you start to look at the dynamic data that you're, that you're getting, mm -hmm. can you use that for? Um, shaping new experiences I mean and and it, is that something that you your data analytics team work on or is it something that's done in collaboration with with uh, uh, I would say it's uh, done in collaboration uh, because uh, the data is sent over also to Polestar and if we are talking about the, uh, this kind of service so it's sent over so Polestar does there but including in the service we have the uh, we have this uh, insight of the mouse, I think we call it, yeah? and uh, and where we are supposed to 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 uh, propose new services based on our data. It can be about uh, charging behavior, or it can be about uh, consumption of the or driver behavior, or. It can be about that, uh, okay, all the drivers are driving this road, so if you should build a new uh, uh, workshop, build it here, because then it's, it's you know, that kind of uh, uh, decision-based material. So there's a lot of talk about connectivity and OTA, and one of the questions that's come in is, connectivity in many parts of the country is inadequate. Uh, even to support OTA, how is this challenge being met? Um, as you sort of think about this, you know, from the service delivery perspective, uh, Daniel, I mean, how do you, how do you address that? Yeah, what what was the question? It was that uh, how, how you how do you meet the the challenge of the fact that uh, connectivity in many parts of the country isn't yeah. isn't there, or is poor? <coughs> so from all kinds of that is something that you need to take into consideration when designing the, the service, if it's OTA or an in-vehicle service or whatever, because that is how it looks like. Hopefully it will become uh, better and better, but uh, so already in the design state you need to uh, handle that. And for example, if you have in-vehicle apps and you need to sample the data in the vehicle until you get in the connected uh, and you need to calculate where the last park position was and uh, those kind of things. Thomas? You... Yeah, well, um, I, it, it is, it could be a challenge, um, but I'm, I'm, let's say, let's put it that way, I'm not an OTA specialist, but I know that the successful rate of OTA at Polestar is really, really high, meaning that we, we do manage to, to face that uh, challenge quite well. Um, but yeah. 
it is it is a challenge with the different part of the region with the less connectivity and, and so on. That's for sure. Um, so I think we're, we're just about to the end. Um, thank you very much for, for quite fascinating conversation. I think that you, know, you are pushing the boundaries and I think that's a, it's a great uh, learning. The time to market aspect is really, really key. And I know that, uh, you know, but the collaborative development I think is the other interesting aspect. So uh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. Thanks thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.